Welcome back, everyone. It's M Train. <laughs> better without my hat you I look think. amazing I think, yeah. <laughs> oh is that what the panic yep. was yeah i was like oh we're on <laughs> jesus yeah. what you, i mean you can no. flip-flop you can go back and forth yeah, yeah, you yeah, look yeah. great okay great thanks feel it hi out. everybody hi everyone and hope you're back. well thanks for watching thanks for listening we're back with another episode of working on it whoop, whoop. today we're working on oh working uh, on it we're working on working. working on working we're working on working i like that i think it's still a working time it is. Uh, <laughs> I like it. Like? I like. I liked working on grinding, but Megan's like, oh, know, like the dance, like. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right, and then Kelly grade. and Daryl said, "Oh, the gay app." So yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> grinder. <my gosh>. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, that one's dead. Or it's like working on never giving up. There's a lot of working titles titles here because Tommy Bruce is a god among us and has oh, been through okay. everything and never gives up and has the best life story like needs his own movie like forrest gump type situation many people compare forrest and i yes our stories yes <laughs> <laughs> they're so magical um, his nickname is forrest <laughs> yeah yes um and and well, i we respect it and we appreciate it and i want i've had people call me and ask me to ask you about your whole story just for the listeners. Just for One the listeners. person has called an ass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jojo. Um. Jojo, who we know and love. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of shared traits that all three of us have, and we will, yeah, yes. we will dive into all that. And everybody, once this is out, I guess you'll find out when we find out what we decided we're working on today, because yeah, yeah. it'll be in the title. <laughs> that was smooth. Thank you. Just call me Gump. Okay, where are you Forest from, Tommy? Gump. From Tucson, Arizona. Love it. It was a great place to grow up. I, it was actually nice. it was a great place to grow up because it was we were just outside the whole time it's crazy hot which hot. i didn't yeah but you didn't when it's what you know and you guys know this from growing up Cold. on an island that's what you knew so what we knew was just hot all the time outside all the time so much so when i finally left when i left arizona to go to new york i didn't realize that i could get as pale as i could because I had just Whoa. like a base tan wow. from living in Arizona. Congrats. That I was like, yeah, I didn't know you actually had a base tan. I thought that's that you were just I, super pale. <laughs> I mean, today you got a tan going though. I think I'm flush. Oh, I think that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm. I'm in, a, a I'm in a sweatshirt one. and jeans and feeling hot. <laughs> no, he had that New York kind of swagger about him. That it's it's just run and gun. But it gets so hot inside of the in the you know. Yeah, if I didn't. Uh, no, you were from Arizona. I'd be like, you're from New York. That is one yeah. of the greatest compliments I can. <laughs> oh, you crushed it! <laughs> it's yes. the 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 ethos and the lifestyle and the like. Who? That's your favorite place. It is. I think it is my favorite place because I feel like in New York, literally anything can happen and you can achieve anything you want to achieve. Well, and it is about. As opposed to other places, I'm not saying that other factors don't exist here, but it is truly about working the hardest in order to win. Yes. And you can achieve through working the hardest. And New York is a city that embraces that and celebrates it. Yeah. Like even get into that subway. First oh, yeah. To get a good seat. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's a battle. It's a yeah. war. Everything is a battle. There. Everything. Yeah. That's why it's my least favorite place. Yeah. Yeah. On I was going to say, like, I know. I us know. island kids, we're like, that's, I, that's like the most terrifying place for us. <clears throat> most yeah. tall buildings. Bye. Yeah. See ya. Oh, you got to just <laughs> you gotta walk? hustle to the subway? Dude, yeah. absolutely not. You know? Yeah. yeah you, have and like, you have to kill the for everything. The smell. Yeah. The smell yeah. alone. I'm like, yeah. I don't like it here. I was all, I've always been drawn to New York. Before I even had gone to New York. I was like, oh, that's my city. Why? Just Did you watch seat. like James and the Giant Peach? Just and you're the like, movies. I'm going to get yeah. there. It was like, <laughs> the movies. look how big it is. And, and you weren't like, disappointed? Huh? Oh, no. Like, you know, movies make it gorgeous. Like, no. they yeah. made Hollywood I gorgeous. Looking, and I was like, ew. Looking back on when I actually landed there to move there, I'm jumping around the story. But when I landed there to move there, I landed in uh, LaGuardia. Ugh. And I had to wait two and a half hours for the bus because I had no money to go anywhere. And I had like two bags that had my entire life in them. And I 
could not shake the excitement and the smile and the joy because I was like, Stop. I'm here. I'm in That's the city. Awesome. It was amazing. Jesus. Now, if I flew to New York like that, I'd be like, everybody go fuck yourselves. Yeah. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. But at the I time, had like, that oh, experience. I don't just think like, I've had that anywhere. I think the root of the experience, and I do think you've had it just in different situations. Yeah. The yeah. root of that is when you want something so badly or you want to like go after something so badly when you either begin to achieve it or you do achieve it that's the feeling that i'm talking about where it's like you can't you're not actually you're less affected by the environment around you and more focused on the like oh my god we're actually doing it like we're okay me in nashville yes yeah, yeah you got it plopped from an island nashville was everything to me yes yeah and it felt and like a I'm success like, yeah <laughs> Right, but if you look time. back and you look back, even when you guys got to LA and you were in Park La Brea. Oh my God, you yeah. we were peaking. Yes, you were yeah, peaking. Yeah, 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 we you were, were thriving. Peaking. We were like to be able the to like walk in and get a reservation at a restaurant that yeah. you were like, oh my gosh, I'm living. Yeah, look at me go. Like, yeah, you're, I mean, you're right. They know me. That's right. when it's aligned. Like, that's when I feel like we are aligned as people when you're feeling that excitement in that moment because you know you're doing the thing that you set out to do and you yeah. were meant to do. Yeah. I've I mean, just never had like an amazing, someone take, took me out in New York and it was the best night ever. Like I never, I, it's, it's not for always, everybody. Yeah, it's, it's not, not for everybody. everybody. I always and that's failed. A, it's like that's just, that's what it is for me. New York is that for me. It's, it's a, everybody has different places, different things. You would go things, out and thrive. Goals. Oh my gosh. I couldn't even I, get like laid. I couldn't even get like, yeah. a, I couldn't even pick up a man yeah, well, at a that's, club. That's how I feel in LA. But that's another yeah, episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. I mean, episode. anywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fuck. Okay. I anyway. think I've definitely had moments of like filming Megan on stage at like a super big uh, festival or something where there's like s- extra amount of people. What, what was that? Uh, in we, Germany New or Orleans something? Jazz. There was one overseas r- where you Did were holding we... a flag. Wow, so many issues. It does feel like Germany. Was it something like that? It was a major festival. I don't know. And I, I was just like, oh, wow. Or the UK. I don't know. There's Probably so the, maybe UK. UK. Probably the UK. Did we pass sheep to get to the stage? <clears throat> I don't know. There was so we did so much in so little time. <laughs> but there, I remember having Blacked a moment filming. Like I can't believe like Megan is a superstar <laughs> and I'm filming her on stage. Like <laughs> Me this every is day, crazy. Bro. <laughs> yeah, that's it, okay. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's yeah. just and it manifests its way in our lives all differently. But that's the exact premise. Okay. When yeah. you're like, oh my gosh, it's happening. And so, then you go back to your like your original jobs. Yeah. Like we're about to get to Tommy's. Like, but if you in that moment, so if you adjust to the moment where you like weren't aligned in that moment. I don't think you'd feel like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. This is amazing. This is everything. You'd be like, it is fucking hot. I can't believe I'm standing here. There's so many people that are oh, all near me. Like, I mean, yeah, That's definitely. the opposite of that. That's yeah. when you're like, okay, I need to realign because I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Yes. I mean, filming the Miami show on the Untouchable tour. Dude, I was like, this is a That was nightmare. one we could have had a, without. A drencher. <laughs> that was a dr- <laughs> you know, know what was I happening know, under my dress? Stage. Yeah, yeah. I can, well. Disease. I, yeah. That dress should be burned. <laughs> No, the worst one though. The worst one was Philadelphia Fourth of July when you wore and I wore a trash bag. bag. (laughs) I wore a goddamn trash bag. An actual trash bag. It's like like, no, when those people it looked really hot and cute and great photos, but it was trash material. You know when you go in the the sauna and you wear like literal yeah yeah, to like shed weight, like you're trying to get wrestlers. That's what I did. It was zero after. And then when we went backstage after, you ripped it off and said, "This needs to be burned." Burn. And it, by the way, <laughs> no one it, should touch it. No one should. I don't think anybody did. I think it was trash bag. I've had so away. many outfits like that. Yeah. Anyway. I'm like, for everyone's safety, put that in the garbage. Yeah, yeah, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> nobody Jesus. touched this. Okay, wait. We're talking about you hustling. Sorry. We have to go back to your cheerleading phase. Oh, wow. Not phase. Really? Because okay. you were. Th- it's um, not a phase, first of all. State yeah. champion. Two time. <clears throat> two, yeah. two yeah. time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's the, been winning his whole life. The. The. <laughs> The root of all of it is just I love – I really like being busy. Like I like to have a lot of activities. I like to be pulled in many different directions. That's when I feel – that's honestly when I feel most alive and that I'm like, oh, okay, we're doing it. We're doing something. I'm like, oh, I got to go do this. I got to go do that. I got to do this. And that started literally in like junior high. I was always the student government kid and like super – into all involved. of that. Very involved. I actually yep. wasn't, fun fact, not a great student. Really? I was, yep. I was a, I was all about life lessons social and learning butterfly. about life. And yes, buzzing all around and social butterfly and whatever. I can see yeah. But like, not, I, I would use student government and the activities to get out of everything. Right. Smart move. Oh, yeah. That's they a also, good play. It was, they, <laughs> I mean, we'll jump to college, but like, I, at the end of every semester in college, 
I'd be like, all right, it's time. I gotta go have my meetings because I'm like basically failing most classes because I was yeah. never there. So I'd go and I'd sit down and I remember senior year, I was taking like a freshman course that I had to finish to check off the list to get my degree. And I had been there twice, maybe <laughs> twice. I always told them I was going, and I was doing legitimate things. Yeah. Like I, I was up at the state capitol lobbying the legislature. <laughs> yeah, you were just like, like doing real things. And no, you were, you were... But I was not learning what indigenous studies, whatever yeah. we were learning that day. I was not learning it. So I went and I sat down, and he's like, I heard this would happen. And I was like, What's that? He's like, I know you meet with everybody at the end of the semester. Here's the thing I'm going to give you your own project. Finish the project. As long as you finish it and it's good enough, I'll pass you. Wow. You're doing good work. I was wow. Like, Thanks. That and then I also had one person once <laughs> in school who he sat me down at the beginning of the semester and he said, listen, I know all, I know your thing. I know you're never going to be here and it's fine. I'm going to give you an A. I'm going to give you an <gasps> A if you can get me a tailgate spot. And I said, I'll get you a tailgate spot. What? That's what I'm talking wow. about. Connection, yeah. shaking, yeah. But that, bacon. Like, that, those life lessons in that yeah. moment, yep. oh, have taken with me everywhere. Oh, I'm like, yeah. oh, people don't want the actual thing they're asking for. Everybody yeah. wants something else, and it's all about what you can yeah. get for them in order Especially to get what you need. in yep. this world. Yeah, and then you get into this world, and you're like, yeah. oh, forget about it. Anyway. <laughs> oh, forget, forget about it. Forget about it. One so, for you, one for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one for you, two for me. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, always super involved. And, yes, I, I tried every sport. I was bad at all of them. And I I was roped into cheerleading by becoming really? the mascot. Deep down, like within my soul. You were like, I'm oh, I was like, oh my but God. But you were also straight at the time? Yeah. Arizona quote, straight. Quote, unquote. Uh, as the yes. cheer captain. Yeah. You, know <laughs> you weren't out yet. <laughs> I was not out yet. Okay. Um. So, yes, buried in the cheerleading world. And I had, I mean, I truly Literally had, wore a mask. I actually <laughs> yeah. was literally in a full head to toe <laughs> costume. Um, also, one fun fact: there is a competition for mascots, and I and won state champion for that too. Jesus, just, just the applause. Shit. <laughs> yeah, applause in the back. Um, that's a video we should find, but that's yes. another story for another time. Anyway, but what I learned in all of that, all of this stuff was like training to. So my, I'm one of my favorite people and quotes. Favorite people share quotes. Yes. Um, Cher's mom, Cher the singer, do you believe that of person? Of course. Yep. <laughs> um, Cher's mom told her when she was a kid, she was like, you will never be. Mm, I know this quote. You know, I, I live by, the, I, tru I actually legitimately live Check by this, this quote. Out. You will never be the prettiest, you'll never be the smartest, and you'll never be the most talented. But you can outwork anybody to get exactly what you want. And it is so true. Dude. And you see it all the time. You see like, the hottest people, or like the people within in our world, people with the most incredible voices, if they don't have a work ethic, if they don't have a vision for who they want to be and how to get there, they will quite literally never get there. And that is that is consistent in every part of life. You wow. see, because there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I wish I had that, I wish I had that. And you're like, well, are you doing this? Are you doing do this? Have you tried it, this? Yeah. And they're like, no, no, no. I'm like, okay, well, it's I not going to happen. People ask me for help, and then I'm like, do this, and then they don't do it. Right. I'm like, yeah. And then they, and that's when you see. Then you learn. You these are all like little tricks you learn along the way. You're like, oh, well, this is why I'm lapping you, because yeah. this is this is my baseline of effort. And you know what I do that no one else does? I ask for help. Yes. Every. I struggle with trying to figure out what to ask for. Ask for help. Ask for. Just I call, start with one thing. Yeah. Like uh, anything in my life, I'm like Tommy. What should I do about this? How do I do this? It's, if it's a mental thing, I go, therapist, what do I do about this? There's categories. Yeah. There, and there's also people on the other side, people love to be asked. Yeah. People love noticed that. to be able to be of service to other people. Oh, I love when people ask me for help. Yes. I'm like, let me find it for you right now. <laughs> exactly. But like that, it all goes into this category of like, you can... You can go after and achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve if you're willing to do the work. And doing the work is probably a decade of failing. Yep. At least. A lot of failure. Yeah, but you have to You have to fail is what I've learned. Tell me your failures. So you went to college. Oh, so many failures. <laughs> um, I mean, we can. my biggest failure was the end of senior year of college. college. But it's also possibly the best thing that ever happened to me because it like shook everything off do you know this story yeah it's my favorite story oh it's so good of all um, time 
so I mean, in college, I was again. So I literally went to college. I was like, oh, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not. Gonna, I'm just going to like be a student who has fun. By day two, I had signed up for every club that had ever existed, mm -hmm. and I always knew I wanted to be in music. Like I always knew I wanted to work in music, but I didn't know what that meant. I grew up in Arizona. We didn't have management companies or attorneys or record labels or publishing. We didn't have any of that. Similar to the island, like yeah, you yeah. Don't we don't know what that stuff is. Yeah. So there was a concerts committee that I went to the meeting for and I was like yep great sign me up awesome can't wait and we were sitting around talking about who do you want to bring to campus this year and they I was like well what are the rules and they're like no it's just a brainstorm no rules and I was like okay great and this would have been 2005 which was a triumphant moment for Mariah Carey and the Emancipation of Mimi which is one of my favorite albums I love that album but you're both looking straight through my soul. <laughs> I got no anybody, idea. Anybody I don't know. Oh my god! It was just now that in 2005, Emancipation of Mimi was gigantic. Okay. okay, she's in the gold dress on the cover. Oh yes, yes, yes. It's a, but weird, I thought that's it's a, a diamond album. To, or, to be diamond her, album. She looks the same on every cover. Okay, so cool. I guess that doesn't right. really narrow it down. Um, so I said Mariah Carey, and they just wrote it down, and I was like, oh, to come perform. Yeah, I was like, oh, oh, Jesus. we really that's can insane. do anything. So then I quickly realized, okay, well, the power in making those decisions lies with student body president. I did that in high school and junior high, and I was like, okay, that's what I'm going to set my eyes on. I want to become student body president. So <clears throat> I was already in student government and all that stuff. And it was like, it was great. I went to University of Arizona. Like, it was great. We got to do a ton of things, and it was awesome and really involved. And I decided, for whatever reason, because I wanted to get there as quickly as possible, I was like, I'm going to run – for student body president my sophomore year so i can be president junior year with the chance of being president senior year like truly living a bit of an element of delusion <laughs> <laughs> good goals no, though at least get some goals <laughs> but it was like i it was one of those moments which was why not yeah worst thing that can happen is i lose right yeah. and like i really feel like i can do this job so let's do it so we run like a whole campaign and it was there were multiple candidates and then they there's a primary, like the actual elections, and there's a primary where they get trimmed down to two candidates. And I stayed in the race by like 100 votes. So it became me and this other guy, Brad Wolf, who was... What a name. I know. He was a fraternity guy, oh. really popular, really classic cute. Brad. Like, Were classic. Were you out yet? No, no. Oh, fun Lord. fact, fun fact, neither was Brad. <gasps> we both came out after. <gasps> Okay. Okay, yeah. Brad. Be Brad. Listening, Brad. Is he the one? No. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> no. But we do wish him the okay, best. Okay, we wish him the well. well we wish um, him well. So Brad is like, okay. hands down the favorite to win. Really? Hands down the favorite to win. Also, fun fact, and shout out to my older brother. They were in the same fraternity, and his fraternity was like, you have to make a choice. Like, you need to work on Brad's campaign. Whoa. And he's like, yeah, yeah. This is my actual brother. Yeah, choose your brother or brother. <laughs> Over your brother. Whoa. Yeah. So when we- the, Who do you pick? Me. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, the, but the night that we, like, so you go, it's very dramatic. When they go to announce <laughs> the winner, it's like an oval room. Oh, dude. And like Team Tommy's on one side yeah, and Team yeah, Brad's yeah. on the other this side. Is literally the election. When my brother walked in, they booed him sitting next to me. Stop. Yeah. So <clears throat> we were, yeah, so we're campaigning and it's like, it is literally all day, every day. I didn't go to class for like two and a half weeks. I ended up dro <laughs> dropping a finance class because I was like, I don't know what's going on. I have to, I'm trying to win. And I'm trying to win. I spent every single day Dog. for two and a half weeks on the mall, which is like the big outside green grassy area, out there talking to everybody that would talk to me. And I would walk people to class. I would walk. They're like, I'm not voting. I'm not. I was like, let me just tell you why I care. Let me do this. Mind you, I'm in a suit and flip flops and weird ass glasses. Like I have to find an old photo and also my camera. I absolutely see this. Yep. As and much I as we made fun of Tommy's <clears throat> swag with us, like imagine the college oh. swag, Oh my dude. God. Out another level of crazy. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and I would walk them to class and I would like, you can tell when you make an actual connection with somebody versus not. Like some people will eventually engage and then it, we would finish the walk and I would feel like, okay, I think they might vote for me. And like we keep going, I did that all day until the very last minute of voting. So then we go into that creepy oval room, we're in the two sides, and the elections commissioner, so funny to say all this for college, but it was a very big school. <laughs> Sounds um, so serious. It was, I mean, in the moment it felt like life or death. Yeah. 
and you run on tickets. So like only a couple people on my ticket had won because the president's the last thing they announced. So we had like a fair number of losses. And I was like, okay, I don't, you know, we just don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. And they're like, the election commissioner says, and with 85 votes and the whole room goes, <gasps> cause I, it was, the margin was 85 votes of thousands of votes. The difference was 85. Oh God. And they said, your next student body president is Tommy Bruce. <gasps> Whoa. Did I you mean, jump? Yes. The cover of the paper the next day is me jumping in the air. Oh, like dude. flying in there. Actually, right. we have that video somewhere too that I can pull, but oh my God. it was sometimes full transparency. If I'm like, I need to feel a moment of life. You go I'll back go and watch and that video. <laughs> Stop. That's yeah, amazing, dude. I'll be like, oh. the underdog story. Like, I don't know why I thought for some reason you weren't going to win. I, I I was like team Brad. I was like, it's got to be Brad, right? It all, we all felt that way. And there, the night, oh, it's actually, this is, there's some great parts of the story that I've forgotten. The night before we had all gone to campaign at the improv, which was called the, the, the Charles Darwin experience, the in, improv group and the improv group. There was like 150 people in the room. The improv group on the stage that I was at to go support and campaign at the end says, and we encourage all of you to go vote for Brad. <gasps> and I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna go. <clears throat> Improv. Your college experience is so, so different than mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, so very many much. clubs and <gasps> electorals. <gasps> Tommy. <laughs> and so. Okay, so then you became the president. So it became and by you president. were like Mariah's coming. <clears throat> well, so then I, I had moved past Mariah at this point, and because we had like the moment had passed, and we had done a lot of great shows, and we ended. I mean, we did some amazing concerts, and like at the. You guys won't care about this, but Franz Ferdinand and Death Cab for Cutie, which was having a huge moment. Yeah. We had them together as a co-headline show. Wow. We had Sugarland, which was like a country wow. act when they were on like the Meteoric oh, yeah. Rise. We had Gym Class Heroes when they had that. <gasps> oh yeah, 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 I got that one. And then, so my part of my platform was, we're gonna have an, a, a show in the arena. We haven't had a show in the basketball arena since 1975. So spent the whole year doing it. A lot of ridiculous back and forth. Ended up booking the Kanye West Glow in the Dark Tour. And it was Kanye West, Lupe Fiasco, NERD, and it was unbelievable. It's insane. I mean, it was insane. It was so hard to do, but it was so worth it, and it was really fun. So we finished that. Wait, so Kanye was there? Oh, yeah. You got Kanye? Yeah. He oh opened the God. show with Good Morning, doing that song from Graduation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good morning. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> He's on, like, a rising platform. Wow. And that's one of the, like, that's a, what's that so movie? That's a good. core good. That's a core memory where I'm like, I know I can close my eyes and be in exactly in that moment. Where it's Whoa. like, oh, we achieved it. Like we said, we were going to do this, and, and we're going to do it. this. Yeah. So then I run for student body president again, <clears throat> and I ran unopposed. So I had two terms of student body president. So the senior year, I was like, we're doing a stadium show. Stadium. Yeah. So <laughs> why? The well, the because it was go big or go, go home. Keep going. Make it bigger. You got to you got to one up yeah. yourself. And the start of that year was would have been two thousand and eight. And I remember April of 2008, when I had just won re-election, I was driving from Phoenix to Tucson, which is like a two hour drive. And it was like the overnight, like 2 a.m. radio. And Katy Perry, I Kissed a Girl came on. And I was like, what is this song? Yes. This song is unbelievable. And I immediately sent an email and said, is Katy Perry available? Can we have her? We have like a back to school concert, which is we have a zero budget for, and it's a free show. So you have like nothing to play with. And I emailed her agent and they were like, I'm not sure if we represent her, let us check. Like she was nobody, nobody, nobody. Wow. Nobody. It was the you know, overnight radio, like no yeah, one's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. does not mean anything's happening. So they're like, oh, we do represent her. What, it, like five grand, whatever. It was like, give her 10 and see if she confirms. Cause I was like, this, she is, I've never felt in, until that moment, that moment of like, this is gonna be really big. She's going to be really big. And they confirmed right away cause she wasn't getting any offers. And then in two months, it was the summer of I Kissed a Girl and the summer of Katy Perry. And we were like, oh my God, we got it. That's and wild. that's actually the moment where I was like, okay, maybe I could do this professionally. Yeah. Because this is like, this feels like this could be something. So she ended up having to reschedule, but she still came to the show and she was amazing. And wow. she, 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 we did a show at the, the theater, a part of her tour. They really like, they kept the same deal and her show was wow. unbelievable. Yeah. So <clears throat> we're, we have Katy Perry locked in, and then we're like, okay, great. We need the stadium show for that year. And I, it was before festivals in our world were like really a thing. And I was like, I want to do a festival style show. Like I want to have multiple Outdoor. acts on a show. So this was 2009, and we had uh, 
Chris Brown confirmed as our headliner. <laughs> yep. And we were announcing our show the Tuesday after the Grammys. The 2009 Grammys <laughs> is when that pile of garbage beat up Rihanna. Right. Oh. Right. Yeah. So pre that, Chris Brown was a get. Yeah. It was a bit like he had hit after hit yeah, after yeah. hit. He's yeah, a yeah. Top it was like, this is the next coming of Michael Jackson. It was amazing. Sunday night happens. And we're like, oh my God. Immediately send an email that says we cannot have him on our campus. Yep. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you're the worst of our concern. You're the least of our concerns <laughs> yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Like, get out of here. Mm-hmm. So we cancel him and pivot. <laughs> A great pivot because he's amazing, but significantly more expensive pivot. <laughs> pivot to Jay Z. Oh my God. <laughs> significantly more expensive. <clears throat> so we have, and he confirms right away because clearly he's like, why are these idiots paying me this much money? Sure. So we have Jay Z as the headliner, and then we have Third Eye Blind as like a throwback kind of act. Sick. I love it that. Was, Big they fan. were great. I, they were great. And then we had Kelly Clarkson, who had, was coming back with uh, My Life Would Suck Without You, which was a Billboard Hot 100 number wow. one, and everyone loves Kelly Clarkson. And then we had a couple local acts, and we had the Veronicas. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Yeah. So it was, like, stacked, but because Jay was so expensive, the tickets were crazy. And we sold, like, we sold, like, 12,000 tickets, but we needed to sell, like, 18,000 tickets. Right. <clears throat> and there were a lot of challenges that went to the whole thing, whatever. So the night of the show, I was there... This is the polar opposite of the Kanye experience. I was there feeling like only I know in this moment how much money we've just lost. How There's, much? Well, well in your head. that's okay. Mm-hmm. So I cannot enjoy it in any way. <laughs> it was like an, it actually was like an out of body experience. So they did come Damn. and perform. Oh yeah, we had the show. Okay. We also named the show the last Smash Platinum Bash, which. That's Jesus. insane. I know. Yeah. I've got. How do you, how'd you, you even say banish. that? Yeah. I couldn't yeah. just say it. Lash, 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 lash. <laughs> so <clears throat> the next day, the headline this is before anybody knew how much money had been lost. The headline was The Last Match Patent and Blash <laughs> Bash <laughs> has 99 problems, but Jay Z's not one. I was like, okay, that's okay. not that bad. Two days later, the headline in literally every paper in Arizona was Bruce loses a million. <gasps> Holy shit. We lost a little over. I like to say a we spent. Older. We spent a little over a million oh to make this dream come true. And this, we also we had over a thousand student volunteers. We gave people an, the experience of a lifetime. Of a I lifetime. Mean, these concerts sound <clears throat> crazy. They were crazy. And we, I actually remember I got to stand in the pit next to Kelly Clarkson watching Jay-Z. And she's like, I've never seen him before. And I was like, I love you. <laughs> oh, was, my God. I know, I know. It was crazy. Does she know that now? Have you mentioned that to her? No. She hasn't doesn't. come back up. One day I hope to discuss it with both Kelly and Jay. Yes. Mr. Z. I don't know what to call him. Mr. <laughs> Z. Hope. Um, okay. So that was, this is now two weeks before graduation. It was like... Um, it very, it's interesting because it's very much like what would be getting canceled now. Really? Yeah. Because it was, I was, everybody, they decided to create this narrative of I spent students' money on this show. Oh. oh. Which was not true, but nobody cares about the truth in that moment. No. Like, that's right. not, the money doesn't come from tuition dollars. The money doesn't, it's not, it's just not how that works, but nobody cares. It's a sexy headline and it was getting pickup after pickup headline. after pickup. What did you do? How did you I, sleep? So I disappeared for five days you literally got canceled yeah i guess i did now that we're saying it like this yeah disappeared for five days and like it was the thing where you know you like are checking on the person i literally did not leave my room oh my god but i'm supposed to graduate like we're going into graduation and i'm giving the graduation speech (laughs) so i forgot i remember it's I don't remember who it was because it wasn't like a close friend or anything or whatever. But this one person, we were at like a pre-graduation kind of like run through thing or something like that. And he was like, he was like, I'm glad to see you here. Just know that this will pass. Like, this is not a forever thing. I know everyone's being really rough right now. It's not a forever thing. And it was like the most random person, but it like really resonated in the moment. I was like, it is going to pass. It's going to pass. It's all going to be fine. Wow, little guardian angel out of nowhere. Kind yeah. of. Like a very random one, too. Yeah. Um, so we, I, it's now two weeks after the show. It has not died down in the slightest <laughs> because it became like a political thing in the state. 
they're like, how could you guys let them do this? And they, I became the scapegoat because it's like the equivalent of firing the person in charge. Yeah. I just happened to be graduating, but they could call it getting rid of. And like the new student body president was like addressing it, being like, we'll clean up his mess. And this. Oh yeah. They would (gasps) use, I'm sure. Yeah. Everyone was using it. Easy, easy. And I was like, and also it's one of the, (laughs) my dad likes to still refer to me as uh, Nixon, meaning you did a lot of good, but they're only going to remember you for this. Oh my God. And I was like, thanks dad. Jesus I know. <clears throat> so we go to go do graduation and there's like a procession where you're walking across campus and I was petrified because I was like, I'm going to get booed. I'm going to go in. They're going to put, yeah. I'm going to get called up and I'm going to get booed. And as we're walking into the arena, the, this guy like walks up to me and like gets very close. And I was like, what's about to happen? And there's like people around, but not in a way that's like, you feel safe in any way. And he just, flips me off with both fingers and he's like fuck you just fuck you and i was like okay so this is gonna go as bad as i think it's gonna start yeah (laughs) so i'm going in actually petrified that like i'm gonna get booed or thrown things at or whatever and they i'm early-ish in the program and the provost gives me a really nice introduction and introduces me and i'm like just holding my breath imagine this panic attack i know what like did you have something in your speech prepared for like I'm gonna joke about it? Or? No, I just had like a really strong opening joke. Okay. That I was like I'm I was it was not worth addressing, and honestly, me addressing in that moment was just gonna add yeah just fire add, to add it. To fire, yeah. That I was like, also, this is my graduation too, and I've worked very hard for this school for a really long yeah. time, and I've given a lot, so I should be able to celebrate too, regardless of how you wow. all think about me right now. And walked up to the podium, and there was mostly cheers, which was very nice. And like could hear only a couple boos and then it's quiet. Not bad. It wasn't bad and it was quiet. And then I like open the speech with a joke, a rupture of laughter. And I was like, I got him back. Yeah. That's and insane. then after, when I tell you after that speech, because I mean, I had locked myself away for two weeks. So it was yeah. really easy to spend a lot of time writing a good speech. <laughs> after that speech, it was everything changed. I left that building and everyone was coming up to me like, oh my God, that was great. That was so great. Wow, that was really amazing. That was so great. What are you doing after graduation? Because you're a good person. But also- And he just did it. Like he just- So many people would have just ran away and just hid forever. It would have been very- I was was asked multiple times about like, do you want to do this? Do you feel safe doing this? Do you feel comfortable doing this? Safe. Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Dude, you're a badass. But it was also like, oh, okay. So you can work out of this. Yeah. Yeah. So then when I, I, after graduation, I moved to New York two weeks later with zero planned. And I was like, I landed in New York and I was like, okay, well, you've just failed on a massive scale. <laughs> whatever happens next is whatever. Yeah. Like it's what it, it is a freedom that I wish, I don't wish everybody to have that level of an experience, yeah. but the freedom of failure, I do wish everybody to have because it will, it will open up your world. In a way that you're like, okay, well, if this fails, like what else what's the lose? next thing? Yeah, Great. I can come back from anything. I Unless you're a bad person. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Failure is amazing. Right. And it's like, it's the, anytime anybody asks me for advice or any direction or anything like, I'm like, fail, 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 fail. Do not be afraid of failure. Failure will be your ticket to where you want to go. Oh, working on failure. Oh, okay. We can play oh, with that. Okay. I like that. Okay. I like that. <clears throat> Okay. Damn. Did you fear that like it wouldn't it would hurt you getting jobs? In the oh, future? absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it was your first because job it out was, of college at that time when you Googled me. Yeah. Oh, my, it was. It's the first things that came up everywhere. Was like, all loses money, loses money, loses money, loses money. I'm like, mm, yeah, they're not gonna love me working with money. <laughs> so you, you moved to New York, and then what? You, what did you so do? So I moved to New York with all I want. I had decided I was like, I want to work at CAA, the talent agency, and I want to be a music agent because I had dealt with music agents and booking shows, and I was like, this is such a great job. This is a way to get into the music industry, and you get to work with so much talent. Like this is awesome. So I go to New York thinking, oh, I can just get a job there, and. You know, work mm-hmm. your way up and you're an agent in like a yeah. year. That's kind of how that works, right? <laughs> Hard no. Hard, Hard no. I also no. went with like maybe $2,500. Maybe. Jesus. No job. In New York. Yeah. No job, nowhere to live. One day. No nothing. What did you, where did you live? Uh, the first five days I stayed with my cousin Rebecca on the Upper East Side. Jeez. And then I stayed at the NYU dorms. Yeah, I was, was going to say like a hostel. Miserable. 
the NYU dorms were miserable because it was with all these kids that had these finance internships and were making so much money. And they're like, we don't get it. <laughs> Why are you here? Like, How did you get there? I just found it online. I was just looking for things to where to stay. And then I was like hopping around from just Craigslist to Craigslist to Craigslist. Wow. And I was like, okay, we're going to go after CAA. Very quickly, I was like, this is going to take forever to get because <clears throat> they were just non-responsive, non-responsive. And I ended up spending a year emailing and calling the same guy, the guy that I used to book shows with. His name was Buster Phillips. And he, this would have started in May of 2009. And I heard back from him in April of 2010. So it was just, but it was, it was like, I'm not going to give up on stalking you. Yeah. So I'm I've heard people you say that. They're just like, just keep emailing that person oh. over and over and over and over and over again. I mean, thinking about it now, if somebody did that to me, I would eventually respond. Eventually, but also yeah. we knew each something. other. So I was like, he's going to respond one day. And I just kept, I would send him updates on what I'm doing. Wow. I'd be Jesus. like, just so, just FYI, still want to be there, but like, this is what I'm doing now. So I immediately just had to like get a lot of jobs because I was like, I have no money and I yeah. don't know what I'm doing. <clears throat> um, the first job that I got was at the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company in yeah, Times Bubba Square. Yeah, That's our favorite one. Um, I had never been to Bubba Gump Shrimp Company. I had never seen Bubba Gump the movie. Never. Nope. It's called Dude. Forrest Gump. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bubba Gump the movie. Bubba Gump. <laughs> yeah. Bubba Gump the movie. Jesus I can't believe they gave you that Christ. job. They, they didn't just, did you, did oh, they ask, was, like, did you I, watch the movie and you're like, yeah. It's like a cattle call of sorts. I'm also like applying for and interviewing for, I mean, 12, 15 jobs a day. Like every, but it's, this is also, it's a little bit ago. So it was jobs were on Craigslist. Jobs were in papers. Wow. Where you like look for jobs. Right. And then you just like find companies you want to work for and you email them cold and all. I mean, I went on crazy job interviews. Um, so I got the job there and I was like, oh my God, okay, I have a job, I can breathe. And I got the job on a Friday. We had a, my family had a family reunion on the Saturday that like was already booked and I was going and I was gonna start the job a week later. So I get to go to the family reunion and be like, I got a job guys, don't worry. College degree got me into Bubba Gump Shrimp Company. It's gonna be great. <laughs> <clears throat> and when I, they, they give you like a Bubba Gump uh, binder when you get the job yeah. and then they're like training starts a week from today. So I go back for training and they start asking all these questions. <laughs> that was like about the movie, about the menu, actually. Oh, <laughs> but I'll, the menu's also tied to the it's movie. It's pretty so, much the movie. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> and I was like, um, I don't. I was like, mm, these people seem to know the answers to these questions. I don't know what's happening. And they were like, Tommy, what's in a blah blah blah? Insert Bubba Gump name, Margarita. And I, I was like. Tequila and enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Tequila and joy. Enjoy. Yeah. And I was like, they were like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then they pulled me to the side and the manager and the training manager sat me down. And I was like, well, this can't be good. <laughs> and they they were like, so it seems as though you haven't read the manual. And I was like, oh, I I didn't read the manual. I didn't I didn't pretend like I had read it in this moment. I was yeah. just like, no, I didn't I didn't know. I thought we were gonna go through the manual. He was like, no. Um, we needed everybody to re read the manual before today. So here's the thing. You have, this is word for word, you have the right gumpy attitude, <laughs> but you don't have enough gumpy knowledge. Literally. Why don't you leave? And immediately in this moment, I'm like sweating profusely. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go study and I'll call you. I'll go, I'll, I'll go study and I'll call you. I'll go, I'll like, it's fine, it's fine. I'll they're get the gumpy like, knowledge. Hey, I'll get the gumpy knowledge. Like, they fire you? Oh, yeah. <gasps> and, and I still have this, I got, a W-2. I got a tax for the $2.38 I got for being there. Stop. Yeah. I was like, what is this life? So that was the first job. <laughs> so I lasted at Bubba Gump Shrimp for two hours. <laughs> Jesus. I then, I spent legitimately two months interviewing at Starbucks. And I lasted there for four hours. Because I got there, I was like, the job was fine. And I love Starbucks. I didn't love it at the time. I didn't even drink no, coffee yeah, at the time. But now like I'm, I live for Starbucks. And... I was there and the job was great, but the people scared the shit out of me. The people working there or the yes, customers? The people working there scared the shit out of me. Love that. I was like, oh, I don't I don't think I'm ready for this. Like I don't <laughs> think I'm ready for this. So I'm I'm constantly interviewing for other things. Then I got like my actual real job was I worked at the Letterman show. Um which really? was the late show with David Letterman as a page. Wow. Which What's meant a we page? just we would recruit audience members to come sit in the audience and we would get them really hyped up. <gasps> we would give a speech before. That's Wait, awesome. That those are like stand up comedians. No, not that guy. 
Oh. The guy before that guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're the guy that's like, clap. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Okay. When Dave makes a joke, yeah. don't forget to clap. <laughs> that guy. Sick. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good job. Did that for nine months. And then I was like, well, this is not going to pay. And it was like 30 hours a week at $10 an hour. I was like, this isn't going to pay for New York. No. So then I also got a job at the Apple store, the one in Fifth Avenue. Like you the worked big at cube. Apple? So my rotation would be Monday through Thursday was Letterman show. And Letterman was about 2 to 6 p.m. Unless you were recruiting in Times Square, which is another story for another time. Um, and then Apple was the Twilight Shift, which was 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. Because it was a 24-hour Apple store. Diana Ross used to come in at midnight to have her junior Stop. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. I was like, I love you, Diana. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it was a thing. Yep. So you were in that yeah. shift? Mm-hmm. Night, yep. Okay, yep. 9 to Twilight. Three. They made it, it. sound Twilight. really nice. It sounds yeah. adorable. Yeah. And then uh, there was this brunch place, brunch restaurant called Sarah Beth's that my friend was a manager at. The only way to get a serving job in New York is to say you have New York serving experience. Lie. And I like was still had like my Arizona like rigid brain where I was like, I cannot lie. I cannot lie. I cannot lie. And she she got a job there by lying. And she's like, I'm just going to get you a job here. And I was like, okay. Nice. Great. So then I would do that on the days that I wasn't working at Letterman. So I had, that was my rotation of three jobs. So that was Monday through Saturday or Sunday? It was every day. Every single day. Every day had two jobs. It just varied Jesus. on which two. And then you could afford a place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a 12 by 12 basement apartment. We called it the dungeon. The I had dungeon. they said it's furnished, which meant a twin mattress on the ground and a chair. No kitchen. Oh, I hate New York. Ugh, I loved it. I you literally loved it. Oh so my god. Crazy. Did you, you share that? a bathroom with others? Like strangers? No, okay, no, no, cool. no. I had my own bathroom. That's nice. Because I've heard. Yeah. I did end up sharing that dungeon apartment for one year though. We had two mattresses foot to head or Who whatever. Who was the other person? My friend Jamie. We went to college together. She was like, I'm gonna stay oh, yeah. for a month and she oh, stayed you for still a year. Like her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we, it was very funny. Anyway, so <laughs> then I got another job after Letterman at this building where I was like doing building operations, like getting paying the bills for the people that picked up the trash, like that kind of thing. Yeah. And then I get to, I moved that into like event planning for the building. And then that's when I heard back from CAA. And I had been like stalking and stalking and stalking and calling. And I did really? spend, I spent one day outside the building giving my resume, being like, I'm sorry, do you work at CAA? Could you bring this up? Could you bring Dude, this up? Dude, the hustle. Which the eventually grind. eventually came back full circle when I met with the hiring manager. She was like, oh, that was you? It, she wasn't thrilled. <laughs> oh, about oh, it. oh wasn't about stoked. It. So, so lunatic outside. He calls me and he's like, okay, 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 I get it. You want to be an agent? <laughs> and I was like, I really do. I really, really, really do. And he's like, okay, I'm going to send your resume. And he he kept, he basically was trying to convince me not to be an agent. Really? And, wow. Yeah. And I was like, no, I, I really do want to like, this is what I came here to do. And I want to do this and whatever. And he's like, okay, I'm gonna send your resume. And then I heard from the head of HR. And I had my first interview that turned into 10 interviews. And I was interviewing for a position called music floater. Literally, you float around. That's the job. You would collect. What do you mean? Your job is to, to float, float around the department and help where you can help. Yeah. Check in on everybody. And What's going I, on with you? you? Truthfully, the only way I can equate it for is like, like that was me getting a record deal. Like that yeah. was like that this is, is awesome. oh if I can get in here I'm gonna get everything. You just needed your yeah. foot in the just door. Need to get yeah. in the building. Yeah. And it was ten interviews, two months. Like and I had been offered at this point I was offered a full time job at the building I was working at called Chelsea Market and they were paying like adult money and I was like oh I could have one job this would be this is a nice backup to have but I was like all I want is the CAA job. Wow determination. And I kept going in the last interview. The last interview lasted two and a half, three minutes. They asked two question e- two questions each, and I left and I was like, "Okay, Tommy, you tried." No, I was like, "There's no way. after that last." I was like, "There is no way that I'm getting hired, not based on that interview." And I had I had done so many other ones, but it was the, you're you know you're as fresh as the last interview that you have. So I leave and I'm like, and I'm at peace. I actually legitimately was at peace with it, and I went. Uh, to the gym that night and I get a call that I missed and like every call when I when you're in the middle of trying to get a job anytime you get a phone call that's an unknown phone number and it's like in the city and you're like that's my job offer I missed my job offer they're gonna give it to the next person on the list and I'm like freaking out so I missed the phone call and I knew the number 
because I know the CAA number. And I was like, oh, she's calling to let me down. And she leaves a voicemail. Her name's Kathy Cervenka. And she leaves a voicemail. I still have the voicemail. <gasps> you do? Yes. And she left me the voicemail offering me the job. I literally, again, I can like close my eyes. I know exactly where it was. It was a crunch gym in <laughs> Union Square, New York. <laughs> and I just done like my trial membership at $40 a month. And I was like, I'm going to live my best life on the treadmill, stop in my tracks, and I have to go outside. And I call her back right away. And she's like giving me the offer, which is, it's like 10, also $10 an hour. I think it was $30,000 for the year. And I literally was like, don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. When can I start? Wow. And I was like, this is going to be it. This is so it. You this is where dreams start. Yeah. So I floated for floated for nine months, and then I was I got my first. So I, I had like a long term assignment with somebody, and they didn't hire me at the end of the long term assignment. So I was with this guy for four months, and he I interviewed for the position, and then one day HR sent me a message saying, "Hey, you're going to be training the new assistant." starting on Wednesday and I responded <gasps> no. so does this mean I didn't get the job <laughs> Damn. but all those things are like it's in the moment it sucks but also you can look back Destiny. with some perspective and it is very much like you really just weren't meant to have that no, yeah. that was not the moment for that that wasn't the right match for that whatever 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 and then you get some people that want to give you a shot and like you you get people that believe in you and want to try so I worked for another guy I'm at CA named Mark Cheatham who I love I worked with him for two years, and then I worked for a guy named Bobby Corey for when a year. When were you in the mailroom? That you do that when you get promoted. Oh Jesus <laughs> yeah. Christ! So then that's when uh, that's when I met Jeffrey, and so Jeffrey came to the company. Jeffrey now Jeffrey Azar. Yep, yeah, and he runs Full Stop. Yeah, which is where we manage Megan now and the whole other company. But that's where I but met wait, Jeffrey. Wait, while you were floating, you met him? No, when I was an assistant. In the mailroom. Yeah. Nope. Before no, that, when oh. I was an assistant. Yeah. And he was like, we just became friends. And there, I mean, the amount of times I almost left. In New left, York? Yeah, he would visit. The amount of times I almost left CA was so many times. Really? Yeah, because at one point I'd been there for four and a half years and a lot of people had been promoted around me. <gasps> and I was like, I had a meeting with the head of HR in LA and her response to me when I talked about getting promoted was, if you expect to get promoted in the next two and a half years, you should probably go. And I was like, got it, I'm out the Oh door. my God. Yeah. So then moved to another desk, starting to work for Bobby, became friends with Jeffrey. And everyone was like, no, 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 like you should try. And it's like the tides turned to me fighting for myself, but through like working really hard to prove to people how hard I can work and that I can do good work, it turned into them fighting for me. It's literally high school. It is, it is literally high school. Uh -huh. um, so then I got that you go to a trainee program and which means you go back into the mailroom and you deliver mail. Yeah, it's and right back. And you stack in chairs and you set up fruit bowls and you set up pens. How and old are you at this point? That's a good question. Twenty six. Jesus Christ. What's crazy is that twenty six. Now I'm thirty four. Twenty six. In that moment, I was like, I'm so behind. I'm so behind. Like everyone else is lapping me. I'm so behind. Um, but there were two. <clears throat> I mean, one very common piece of advice that everybody gets, I think, is like, don't look right, don't look left, don't compare yeah. yourself, because everyone's path is different. Exactly. Because what ended up being a really long road for me to get promoted to become a trainee ended up being a really short road on the other side of it, where I got promoted to agent in four months. Yes. So it's like, it all happens for a reason. And the other really great piece of advice that is another one that I give to everyone that asks like when people want to meet with me about like, oh, I want to, you know, go into the business or whatever, is whatever job you have in the moment, make it seem like it's your dream job. Treat that job like it is your dream job. Because if you treat the job like that, people will see that effort and they will see who you are in that role. And that will go so much further than constantly saying, promote me, promote me, promote me, promote me. Right. And it's, it's, and that's now how, like when I'm looking at promoting people, I'm not, if they tell me I want to get promoted, I'm like, I don't. That's great. Everybody wants to get promoted. I want to see your work. And if your work is worthy of being promoted in your current role, that's when you get to move up. And mm -hmm. it's just like it is it is so it's very hard, I will say, because we all want to move up and we all want to grow and we all want to go places in life, whatever that is for any individual. But to embrace your current moment and whatever role you're in and absolutely kill at that job, that's how you'll move forward. 
not complaining. Other people may move up ahead of you quicker. They will fizzle out. Yeah. If they're not working at that same level, they will fizzle out. It's a guarantee. It's the best advice of all time. I think people always want to skip steps. and They, they do, do, especially all, nowadays. Yeah. 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 But it, it's your, it's, it's, this is so old man, but you end up hurting yourself if you skip the step. Yeah. You do because you're not ready you're for not the job. Learning, yeah. If I had been promoted three years earlier, I would I would have not been successful. I would have not been successful. So in that same vein, that's literally how we all got to know each other. Like if I I was an assistant in New York when it was on Pop Sugar or Pop Crush, the blog, when I saw All About the Base the first time, the video. Was it on Idolator? No. It was oh. it was Pop Sugar or Pop Crush, wow. which was like a whatever blog. Yeah, yeah. And immediately I was like, oh my God. It was, it was Were you the in second- the mail room? Nope, I was an assistant in New York. Okay. And I was in conversations to be promoted. Oh. And I was like, this is, it was, I had that feeling I had when I heard Katy Perry, I kissed a girl the first time. Really? And I was like, this is going to be gigantic. Oh my God. She's amazing, this is amazing. And with quick Googles, you can like, I was like, oh, she also writes her music. I was like, this is unbelievable. Immediately craft an email to Jeffrey who's like much more important and a really big deal in LA. And I'm like, he's gonna pay attention to this because we've built a friendship. I've never asked him for something like professionally like this. And this is a moment that I really think that we can connect on. Wow. So I email him and- So you weren't best friends at that time? No, we were just <gasps> friendly. And I send him an email and I'm like, this girl's amazing. This song's unbelievable. She's a songwriter. She signed with Epic Records. We need to find her. And he calls me in two seconds He's like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. Let's call Epic. So, and again, this is why I was like, Jeffrey's the one to make this call. Cause it wasn't like, he's gonna go run with it on his own. He is going to take little assistant me and we're gonna do it together. Hell yeah. So then talk about timing and talk about like a moment. I'd spent six years getting to this moment and I'm getting promoted. And then my promotion story and my going to the mailroom and arriving to LA is literally with your meteoric rise as a pop star where base is hitting number one as I'm arriving to LA and I'm connected to you and the song and we had signed you and it was this whole thing. And I was like, this is crazy. That is again, another, I didn't mean to have common oh themes, God. but that's another one of those, that's like Kanye in the arena moment. That's me when I'm arriving to New York yeah. moment where it's like, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I'm aligned with so wait, exactly I'm where I'm supposed to be. I'm kind of so the reason that you and Jeffrey are soulmates best friends. Oh, completely. And it, you're also definitely the reason that I got promoted in four months. Oh, woo -hoo! I also remember the day that you, I'm sure everybody does, but um, when you got your first Grammy nominations, I was working in the mailroom. So I was up and on my way to the office at 4 a.m. and the Grammy nominations come out and you got, Jesus. Bass got nominated for record and song and I'm, I'm freaking out in the car and I call Jeffrey like five times. Jeffrey at this point has like been around the block more than I have. So a Grammy nomination was exciting, <laughs> yeah. but it's it wasn't. Day it wasn't him. as exciting as it was yeah. for me. And he that was answered, your Grammy moment. He, to <laughs> his credit, he answered. It's like four fifteen because he thought something was wrong. Yep. I just started screaming, and I was like, "She got nominated! She got nominated!" She got nominated. <laughs> and then that day, I felt like I had gotten nominated. The entire CAA building, which is like this giant building with thousands of people hustling and bustling around, everyone is congratulating me on your nomination. And I was like, that's oh. so cool. It was yeah. crazy. It was crazy. I wish you were in that meeting I had with CAA. I know. it's <laughs> Because like Jeffrey held his own and he did great. And I like was like, you're adorable. Jeffrey was so nice and smiley. And he was like, I'm your biggest fan. Like I will do anything for you. And I was like, I just want you part of my life forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you two there were together, I'd be like, there's no, there's no yeah. conversation. We retell the story that I was there. Really? <laughs> In my head you were. Yeah. He's like, oh, you know, Tommy, remember that time that we- Dude, I was, I was with like, my I was dad. Like, yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> we flew my dad out and we were staying in a hotel together. In the same room? Same room. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's really funny. Couldn't afford anything else. That's really funny. And we put the robes on when we ordered steak, and we're like, we're so rich and fancy now. That's amazing. And <laughs> I had clip-ins that my dad and I didn't know how to put on, and we shoved them all over my head, oh. and I wore a backwards hat to that yep. meeting. Yep. And, <laughs> and Jeffrey's like, in, who's you your favorite? You all black. Yep. Jeffrey's like, who's your favorite artist? And I was like, T-Pain. That's Jeffrey's favorite story. <laughs> he retells that story all the time. I was like, like when mm, I met T-Pain. She told me her favorite artist was T-Pain. And he was like, I knew I had to work with her forever. <laughs> I love T-Pain. Dude, T-Pain's the best. He's the greatest. He is. I'm trying to do a song with him every day. Yep. 
Okay, and then, then anyway, one so day I'm recording If I Was You, I, I Wanna, wanna Be Me Too. too. And you come to the treehouse where mm -hmm. I was recording. So and you sat me down and broke my soul. That meeting happened in that summer, and then I was promoted to agent the following April, and <laughs> that. And you and Jeffrey were my agents for a minute. Yeah, and that following winter, which would have been like November, December ish, or something like that, or maybe it was January, February. I don't, I don't know, know what it was. Um, Jeffrey's like, so we're starting a management company, and you're coming with me. <gasps> And and I was like, my um, first thought was like, well, is what about Megan? Really? Was it really? I swear to God, it literally. He Bro. Jeffrey will attest to that. He was like, he was like, well, you know, we're gonna have to tell her. To, we can still be in her life, but like in a different way. You know what's crazy is that Lizzo was there that day. Oh my God, she was. She was in the studio that day. Oh, that is crazy. Crazy full circle. That is crazy. And they came over and they broke up with me. Yeah. Basically and over ramen. <laughs> while I'm while I'm cutting, I'm like, this is the biggest song. It's the best song. Oh, Check yeah, it out. Yeah. They're like, we'd love to talk to you. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. And so they we left and I said, you're my only favorite people I have on my team. <laughs> yes. And we left. And when we, we were in Silver Lake driving back to Beverly Hills, which is about a 40 minute drive, silence. Really? He was like, are you okay? Because I cried in front of him. Yeah. I was like, just know that you're You were silent. You I, were I had because no they words. said Frozen. because you also said I'm gonna manage Harry. We're gonna manage Harry. Yeah, Styles and yeah. like not be your agents. And I yeah. was like, and you're not gonna take me with you. Yeah. But you like <laughs> yeah. not in a up yeah. to front. But I was yeah. like, okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. it was literally horrific. Horrific. It was horrific because it was like a breakup. Yeah. So we leave, and it, I mean, we truly silent. And really, when we that makes me happy. When we finally got home, Fuck Jeff was like, "Are you okay?" And I was like, "No." No, I'm not. No. <laughs> and like the, with the day that we left, then leaving CAA was also so hard for me because I love oh, CAA. Yeah. I love yeah. CAA. Like you I had and you worked, I worked so hard yeah. to get into that building. <laughs> Six <laughs> years <laughs> to be an agent for nine months. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ! I forgot it was literally like yeah, less yeah. than a year. Less than a year. Oh my god! I only made it to one retreat, the one I got promoted at, and then I was gone. Oh my god! And I was like, oh, this is a joke. Um, but I also was like this is the right thing. I knew it was the right thing. So it goes in the category of like, sometimes a really hard shit is the right thing. Yeah. And I was like, it's going to be great. And do shit that scares you. Yes. And like, again, the world of failure, I was like, if this fails, I'm fine. Like I can go get something else. Like it's all okay. Yeah, you're already out so there. So I'm gonna try it and we're gonna go and whatever. But the, like the last day I left CA, they, every single person in the music department wrote me a handwritten note oh. and they gave me a box of handwritten notes and I oh. sat in the valet outside just bawling. bawling. Yeah. Absolutely bawling. And I was like, I don't I called know. my parents and was like, they left. Yeah. What we do I do? We then took your parents out to dinner. You did? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I was like, That's I don't good. want Kelly and Gary to hate us. Right. He's like, okay. And we took him to the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> That's I just felt like was all we, we, went we were to. just like so happy for you guys, though. I, feel I know. Like. My mom was like, this is what you need. Yeah, yeah. She did. She was very like, this is great for you. But yeah. I was like, what about me? Yeah. And then. <laughs> well, fast forward. Two months later, yeah, yeah. your manager at the time took a job at Spotify. Yeah, yep. it all worked out. And you swooped great. right in. And I was like, we, hey, guys, we're yeah. ready. <laughs> yeah. We literally then got, um, I remember when we were like, okay, great, we're doing this. We came over and the next, that day, I was booked with a ticket around the world to go on the promo tour with you. And the next day we flew. I had never been anywhere out of the country other than Mexico. And we flew. I to, took you yeah. on your first we flew to England. I popped all your cherries. Yeah. We flew to England. We flew to, and then we went to Germany and France, all these things. And I had no idea anything that was wow, going on. Wow, you were acting cool. App oh, I was very uncool. Very uncool. And they started like throwing all these things. I'm like, I don't know anything oh, happening. Oh, shit. I have a therapy appointment oh, right now. Perfect. But you guys continue. But like, <laughs> we get all the good shit. Well, that's the end. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, Fuck. what? Yeah. Takeaways. Yeah. Do things that scare you. you. Do things that scare you. I like Do things that, that scare you. And Do then things talk to that your scare you. About it. Yeah. Jump into it. Also, act, I like the one where it was, uh, whatever you're doing, pretend that's your dream job. Yeah. Yeah. That that's was really a, good. It was in my very first meeting at CA. Richard Lovett, the president of the company, told all the assistants that. I was like, that's the greatest piece of advice I've ever heard. And now every single thing I try, you can't always do it, but it's it's the premise of living in the moment, the whole thing. Yeah. Do it incredibly well. People will see that, and that's how you'll project your or move forward in life. That's what I'm hoping with my Twitch career, man. Yeah. I just, I never wanted to be a gamer. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Awesome. Well, Dude. this was working on Thank failure. Thank you so much. I that, I mean, you. You're my Forrest Gump. 
<laughs> I, I will keep running. I'll run wherever you want me to go. Uh-huh. You're truly my inspiration. I do not work hard enough. Yes, I, you I do. I that drive. But I, now you're going to be inspired to yeah. have that drive. Yeah. Well, but you, you fi- when you oh. know you're in the right place, you'll have the drive. And say hi to JoJo because this one's for Hi, JoJo. Oh, yeah, this, this is, is for, for you. We love you, JoJo. JoJo, we love you. Okay, thanks for watching. Thanks, thanks for everybody. listening. Working, Working on, on it, it pod, pod on all socials. All socials. Working on